Hi guys, Graham here from Bainbridge Technologies, your leaders in power products. Um, just a little bit of an educational uh, video, just a quick one. Um, there's a lot of people out there saying that you can't connect a, a Victron uh, battery monitor with a shunt to our uh, slimline battery because you need to get to the negative of the charger. To a certain degree that is true, however, because the alternator is supplying power to the battery and the charger, ultimately the alternator is still the charger because it's charging at 20 amps when the, uh, the charger's on. So we can get the negative of that and put that on the shunt as you normally would do. So I'm just about to show you how you can do that. Just excuse the mess a little bit because I'm actually in the, in the middle of uh, building a, a demonstration board to do it, but I just wanted to get something out there a little bit quicker than, um, than it than we were normally going to, um, just to, to solve a few uh, problems that people are having, they're saying that they can't get it to work. So I can show you that I can get it to work and it works perfectly well. So what I'm going to do to basically replicate the fact of the alternator is this uh, power supply on here. I can adjust the voltage on this and it's a 30 amp power supply, so it's enough to cover the 20 amp of the charger built into this. So ultimately the first thing you would do is um, take the power from your starting battery and plug into the Blue Anderson plug. Now, I also recommend putting the spare little lug that you normally would have the black connected to in there so that when you do clip it in, it clips in and holds in properly rather than just having the one clip from the positive. So that's a little tip as well. So that will plug into here and uh, we'll do that now. So that, that plugs into here. So the positive is all you need from your starting battery to come down to the back of the vehicle or wherever you've got the slim line installed and the positive going in. Now the negative from the battery, or in this case from the power supply, you don't have to run a negative all the way down the car. If you've got this in the back, just go to a ground point that's actually in the back of the vehicle, it's exactly the same thing, because ground and negative in the battery system is it's all the same thing. So it, what you do then is you don't plug that to the input side, you have to plug it to the output shunt charger side. So on this particular, this is the Bluetooth um, smart shunt from Victron. It actually says two system minus. So this is the side of the shunt where you would connect to your DC system, i.e. all your loads and also the negatives of all your charges. So in this case, it's the DC charger from here. But if you had a solar controller, the negative from the solar controller would go onto that and the positive would go onto the positive rail. So you connect the negative, that, as I said, that you, if you do run the twin core down from the front, that's fine. But the negative then goes to the load side of the shunt. So that's, as you can see there, that's coming from the alternator, so down to the load side of the shunt. So that's those two wires done and dusted. Then for the output of the battery to the shunt and to your loads. So in this case, Greg Anderson plug, once again, it's just one of these um, normal type of uh, Anderson plugs that we have with the, the terminals on one end. That will go into your Greg Anderson plug. So that now, the out of your grey, which is your battery, so your battery supply, the negative would go to the battery minus symbol, exactly as you would see on the instructions that come with it. Um, this is, as I said, the smart shunt from, uh, from Victron. So loads and charges go to the, the negative, the load, or from the loads and charges go to the system side of the shunt, and the battery here, like we said before, the negative from the battery comes straight across to the battery side of the shunt. Then the positive from the loads and the charges would then obviously go directly to your positive side here, which we'll get to next. So now that we've got the Anderson plug connected, so the, as we said, the negative from the grey comes across to the battery side of the shunt. The positive, I've just got going through uh, uh, an inline fuse, and these are critical too, guys. These are the best fuses to use for this sort of application. These inline fuses, so in this case here, uh, on, the, uh, on the input side, I would run a 30 amp fuse. Basically because it's only a 20 amp charger, so it's not gonna be pulling more than 30 amps. So you put a 30 amp between this and the alternator or the starter battery, whatever you wanna call it, um, an amp, 30 amp on that side, and then up to, and I say up to 100 amp on the output side. But there's no point putting a 100 amp fuse on there if you're only ever gonna be running a fridge and a couple of lights at a time and not drawing any more than 15, 20 amps. If that's the case, put a 30 on it as well. Now, 
the reason I say up to 100 amp is because if you are running say a six or seven, 800 watt inverter, obviously they're gonna be pulling loads of 50, 60, 70 amps or so. So therefore then you would need a fuse that's gonna carry that sort of, that load. But if you are only running very small appliances and put in a big fuse, what will happen is if um, there is a short along that wire, then those devices are gonna burn out because they're not designed, the internal wiring of your fridges and things like that aren't there to handle 20 and 30 amp current draws. So therefore then you don't want to be having a big fuse because they'll burn out before the fuse blows. So, but they're the best fuses to have. Now they're called a MIDI, a MIDI fuse and a MIDI fuse holder and we sell them either together or you can buy them separately. So I've just got the 30 amp fuse on there for now anyway. And then just wired exactly as, as the smart shunt says here. So the positive from the battery coming out to, and now I've just got this terminal here just to show you different types of ways that you can um, attach your battery. A lot of people are confused also by, oh, it's an Anderson plug. Um, how do I run all my appliances to it? You can quite simply run the Anderson, single Anderson to a dual Anderson plug with one of these if you want to. If you've got some of the bigger loads, as I said before, you can go through this and you can go to this style of terminal. Now this sort of replicates like a terminal that you would have on a battery, for instance. So you can get these in black for negative and you obviously have them in the red for the positive. So you could then just put all your loads onto that. Otherwise you can go up to this bigger style, which is basically just a gang style of, of these. And they're all, this is a buzz bar. So these are all linked to here. So one big negative coming in here, they're all the same negative, but you can just connect all your different loads to those if you want to. Once again, you can get these in red. So you could have your main power coming out of here onto your buzz bar, one black and one red. Now that also gets to the point where if you were running two batteries in parallel, you would run positive and negative to one side, positive uh, on the red and the negative on here. And then the other battery, the same thing, you would parallel up the positive back to that post and the negative to that post. What that will happen then is both of those batteries will share that load. So you've got two batteries capable of, of flowing 100 amp hour each. So the two of them in parallel at that terminal all your loads on there, they can now actually share that and so you can actually put a 200 amp load through that and then it's split between the two. Because if you just daisy chain those together and then put one terminal and try to draw the 200, it's eh, eh, not gonna work. These are rated to 120 amp, these Anderson fuses, um, as long as you use six gauge cable, which we do in these shorter distances here, but they won't handle 200 amp or 150 amp or anything like that. So, um, so that's just a couple of different types of terminals um, that you can utilize. So now that we've got this all plugged in uh, to the shunt, uh, everything to here, and then as I say, follow the wiring on the shunt here. So this, um, this little terminal pushes into there and it goes across to your, your battery positive as well. That actually just supplies the power to the Bluetooth, which you can see it here. So you can then pick it up on your phone. What you would then do is download the Victron Connect app, which is the Victron Connect app. Just go to your app store, whether it be an iPhone or a uh, Android and download the, uh, the Victron Connect app. Once you have actually gone into it, you can see it's already picked it up, Smart Shunt. So I click that one there. When you first do that, it'll ask you for a code, but it actually tells you the initial code is six zeros. So just make sure you put in the six zeros and uh, it will then take you through to here. So now that I've got that in here, it's showing me my battery's at 100%. Uh, it's sitting at 13.38 volts at the moment. Uh, fridges on there. Uh, these batteries are actually fully charged at between 13.3 and 13.5, um, but I haven't had synchronized this yet. So that 100% isn't actually accurate because I haven't actually gone through. Uh, normally you have to charge your battery to 100%, so charge it on a charger overnight until you know that it's actually uh, fully charged. Then you would sync it and cal to calibrate and sync it. So. Um, you can actually go in there and adjust that. So at the moment, 13.3, what I'll do is let's make that say, I'll put that down as 97%. So that means then at roughly around about 13, uh, high, around 13.4 to 13.5, it'll be up around that 100% mark. But it's now showing me that I've got a current draw of 2.62, negative 2.62 amps on there. That's because I'm actually running a fridge here. And this fridge here um, is pulling a load off of this battery because there's no alternator going into this and there's no solar connected to this. So there's no charge going into this battery. So therefore then it's showing me I've got negative, so I've got, got 2.59 amps coming out of the battery. 
Now I'm going to simulate the fact that I've started the car. So you'll see this voltage here, once it gets, a, and then if you watch the little green line here, once I turn this to it gets to around that 13.2, you'll see the little green lights come on. So that's telling me now that the, um, the VSR status light is on, it's telling me that the charger inside here is activated. It's now charging, and I know that because off by here, for instance, on my little desktop um, power supply, it's telling me that it's drawing 17.8 amps. So if I now go over to my Victron app, it's telling me that the current's 15.3 amps. So that's not a mistake, and it's not saying that there's two amps difference between that and that, it's because you've got to calculate the draw of the fridge. So it means that well, I have a positive 15.38 amps going into that battery. And I'll show you that if I disconnect the fridge and take that load off of it, you'll see it's now gone up to current 17.79, 17.9. So allowing for a couple of little point, point of a drop in between some of the wiring and everything here. But it just goes to show you that that is working 100%. Uh, correctly so that if I, I can tell me now I've got 17.9 amps going in I got 17.79 amps going in I'll just connect that fridge back up to the loads and as soon as that fridge kicks in you'll notice so it's showing me that there's it's dropping down to 14.9 because there's obviously uh, a couple amp load there from the uh, from the fridge being activated now if you keep your eye on here if I simulate turning the car off which will be once I get down to say 12.7 volts. So below 12.7, you can see the green light's gone off. So the charge has stopped and my current now is back to minus 2.5 because it's now pulling that 2.5 amps out of the battery for the fridge. So it just goes to show you, you definitely can connect a shunt, whether it be a Victron smart shunt or any shunt or any amp meter that's got a shunt, that's exactly how you do it. Now, if you wanted to connect a solar controller to this, you would do exactly the same thing. You would put the negative from the, the output of the solar controller to this load system side, the system side minus, and the positive over to here. So anything going in positive would still be, the positive stays the same because it's, it's a common to everything, the inputs and the outputs. Whereas the shunt needs to be uh, separated between the battery and the loads so it can obviously work out what the loads are going through that shunt to tell you how much amps and how much current it's pulling. Uh, so same thing if you had a 12, uh, 240 volt AC charger. If you've got it set up in a caravan or a motorhome or in a canopy, you would do the same thing. The 12 volt output from your DC charger, the positive would still go to that same positive post, which is the positive of the battery here and the negative once again would come around to here. So all your charges and all your loads connect to the system side and you only have the one connection of that to the battery. Uh, and that's simply it guys, follow, follow the directions that come with the, uh, the Victron here and you'll have no problems. All it is is just the, where, it says, where it says loads and charges, the negative from the charger, instead of going into that, just goes to there. And that's simply it. That's all you've got to do. And it'll work 100% um, as I've shown you there. It's every time I've turned the load on and off, it's there uh, and, and working. So, um, so yeah, not a problem, guys. That's quite simply how it's done. Now, if you are a little bit lost on that and you need any further information, uh, I'm always available. Um, just click on one of the links. It's got my name and contact details on there. Or call the guys in the office and we're more than happy to get back to you. Um, but it's not as daunting as what you think. And I know that there's some forums up there saying that you can't do it because you can't get to the negative side of the shunt. Um, you can do it in this circumstance because we are pulling power from the alternator through the charger and the alternator is supplying exactly the same current as what the charge is pulling out because it's a single stage charger. So whatever current it's pulling out will be the same as what the load's coming through from the battery. So when you put that on there, so effectively we're pulling the load from the alternator and not 100% from the battery, but as I said, it's exactly the same because the battery is getting it power from the alternator or the start battery, uh, same thing. So um, there you go, guys. So until next time, um, please drop us a, a line if you um, think you need any more information on certain products and we'll certainly get back to them and keep adding them to our 
uh, frequent uh, answers and uh, questions through our support page on our website. So keep going back to that, have a look up to date, it's being updated daily and that's where you'll find all the information. So bye for now.